when you put all these batteries in here, it is starting to look really slick. Oh man, it just looks so maxed out. Maxed out, baby. All right guys, so we are wiring this electrical cabinet. Look at this fantastic mess that we've made. All that stuff right there. Pile of trash down there. Other accoutrements. You like living here in this bus? Dogs can't talk, I forgot. The big issue is that we've got a lot of things to fit in here. Eight batteries, inverter, AC distribution, DC distribution, solar charge controller. A little bit of an engineering task. But the good news is I have already wired up the AC panel and it looks really good. I didn't even show you my panel last time because it looked so bad. Last time I wired up a panel, first time doing it, not great. Time and experience, you get better at things. So my camera died last night when I was doing some of this, but I will show you a little bit of that now. So I just installed two fuse box. This one is 24 volts. It's gonna come straight off of here, which comes straight from the battery bank. It's actually going to run the refrigerator off 24 volts because I think it's slightly more efficient and why not? From there, we need a 24 to 12 volt converter, which is what this is. Everything else is gonna run off of 12 volts. So this is a 12 volt DC distribution panel. This is also gonna get another line coming off of here, which is going to go all the way up here and up into the upper electrical cabinet where it will also get a 12 to 24 converter. So that's what you see right here. So guys, in this video, you see me install this whole electrical system. However, I've made a second video, which will give you a thorough explanation and a walkthrough and let you know if we were happy or not with the decisions that we made. You can watch that at the end in the end card, or you can click on the right hand corner of this screen right now and queue up the next video. All right, back to the building. So that was 10 gauge wire coming from the solar panels to the solar breaker and then from the solar breaker to the solar charge controller. We also use 10 gauge to go from the 24 volt fuse block to the upper cabinet. And now we're gonna use 10 gauge wire to go from the Lynx distributor to the 24 volt fuse block. And the last thing to do is do it. Guys, next up, I'm wiring the Lynx distributor to the charge controller. I'm gonna use two gauge for that. These are cable cutters. Boom. Now we got to strip a little bit off of here. Beautiful. Now we've got this dead blow hammer crimper tool. These guys go in here. This guy goes in here. She ain't going nowhere. DC distribution is all wired up. Charge controller is all wired up. I think the next thing we do is we wire our inverter. And that is gonna require putting a hole inside of the bus for a shore power inlet. So the best course of action is gonna be drilling this from the bottom. So it's back on the bus we go. Not so bad, we move. So if you do this, make sure you have more slack. I, I made it too tight and now it's pulling on the side of this thing, but I think we should be okay. All right, back inside the bus. So back inside the bus, Sam has been wiring the inverter to the AC distribution box. Unfortunately, we do not have enough cable to make one of the connections, sadly. We can make these two connections, but not this one. But we got these right in here and they're gonna come into here. Can't do it right now, so. Okay, what's next? All right, so the next thing we can do is install the batteries. We got a lot of batteries.
That was actually a lot of work unboxing those. I am literally gassed just from unboxing. So we have eight Line Energy UT1300 lithium batteries for a total of, I gotta do the math, total of 840 amp hours at 12 volts. And we're gonna put them in series and parallel to get 420 amp hours at 24 volts. That's gonna be a lot of power. Love it. So the first thing we need to do with these batteries is check that they are all at the exact same voltage. 13.20, 13.20. 13.20. So we are good to put these together in series and parallel. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put these batteries in series. To do that, we are gonna connect the positive and negative of two sets of batteries four times. Right here, here, there, and there. We're gonna use a tight coil of cable with lugs to make that connection. Now, one of the important things here is that each of these cables is exactly the same length. So we're gonna make sure that we are making four cables that are exactly the same length. All right, so a couple quick notes about making these battery cables. So first of all, we have four aught welding cable. This is a little bit more flexible. Welding cable is what you want. Then these are lugs with a 5 8 inch hole. This is what will fit our batteries and most of our connections. We have some heat shrink. That is just to waterproof this connection. Tools that I use are these cable cutters. I use these to cut the cables and also to take off the sheathing. Be gentle when you do that because you don't wanna cut any of those little copper strands. We've got the heat gun to shrink up the heat shrink and then this is something you're gonna have to pick up. This is only like 20 bucks on Amazon, but this is for crimping the lug to the cable. I hit it about three or four times till it sounds like I'm just hitting a rock. And then it's a rock solid connection. In the meantime, Sam has been hard at work. Let me show you what he's got going on. We just installed the positive side. We used these little links adapters. Basically, these just make it so you can use one less wire. Otherwise, you'd need another one of these little little wire chunks that are going to take up more room. You need two more lugs, and they're hard to maneuver. So you get this nice little copper bar that just directly goes onto the links, and you can go straight to a battery switch from there. So from here, we have another short wire. This will go to the A and L fuse holder. So we'll connect this side to here and this side to the batteries and then we'll just have a fuse that goes across like this and how big is the fuse and how many amps does the battery switch take we have a 400 amp fuse theoretically the batteries could pull more um, each one's capable of 150 amp discharge we've got four of them in parallel that's a lot we don't plan to use that many so 400 is fine for us the battery switch how many amps is that so the battery switch is rated for only 300 amps continuous i think but it can do more than that for pretty significant periods of time without any trouble Cool, cool. Yeah, there's really no reason that anything in here is gonna be able to pull 300 amps from the batteries, but technically the batteries could do it. So this is a Victron Smart Shunt. It comes with the battery monitor that Victron sells for about $200. The cool thing about this is that you can get this Bluetooth sent to your phone so you can check your battery status from your phone. A shunt generally just measures the current traveling through it. It goes on the negative side of the battery cables. Basically, you're gonna need this to know how much battery you have left in your bank. So with our battery switch, our shunt, and our big fuse in we have everything we need in place to now put the batteries in here and make the positive and negative connections to the links distributor oh man it just looks so maxed out maxed out baby all right so i gotta pull these out real quick because i want to add something behind there that will prevent these from moving it's about two and a half inches of space i'm gonna screw a two by three to the floor and we'll be done with it so we want these batteries to feel snug as a bug in a rug check it out guys we are all clean in here man it's looking nice We're gonna finish up wiring today. Um, Sam did some of it yesterday while I was at the beach with the family. Thank you, Sam. So Sam put these cables in. He used ferrules and heat shrink. He said that it really didn't make it easier. It was still really hard to get these six gauge wires into these holes, but we're in there now. And now we need to wire into our breaker box and our breaker box will be done. So this is a 70 amp breaker. We're gonna get power from here. This is gonna go to the neutral bar and this is gonna go to the ground bar. Okay, so we're gonna make sure that everything is nice and tight in this panel, and then this panel is wired.
So the next thing I've got to do is I have to ground this whole system through the Lynx distributor to the chassis of the bus, to the frame, essentially. So we're gonna be running big four arc cable from one of these down there and then attaching it to the frame. Okay, we are through. Now we gotta see how long the cable needs to be and um, put a lug on it. Can you pull it up a little bit? A little bit more. Okay, uh, a little bit more. All right, cool. So we will cut it about, about there. Now underneath the bus, we're gonna attach that lug with a self-tapping stainless steel screw and stainless steel washer. But we need a really nice clean piece of frame, so we're just gonna sand the frame down so there's no dirt junk on it. Okay, so that's in there. While it's underneath the bus making the ground connection, Sam has connected the inverter to the Lynx distributor with these big two uh, cables right here. So all this is gonna get pushed up and out of the way into that corner so it doesn't interfere with our batteries. And then finally, we can make the battery connections. The next thing I need to do is make this connection right here. We're gonna go from this positive to this positive fuse right here. All right, so this cable right here, I put these lugs at 90 degrees to each other, and that's gonna make it easier for me to attach from that horizontal plane to this plane up here. I believe we are all wired up. This whole time I've been doing this job with this insulated wrench, you do not want to connect the positive and the negative of a battery like that with a conductor. So you really need an insulated wrench and you need to be sure that as you're installing this, you don't accidentally take a cable, connect it in the wrong way or accidentally touch the positives and the negative with the cable. Oops, we forgot to add a fuse. How many amps is that? Well, this is the, the main one, it's 400 amps. Yep. And this one looks different because this is the A and L fuse. This is the one that is separate from the links for the links on the positive line. And it's going to go right there. We got a bolt in a fuse real quick. Oops. That pop? Yeah. Pop one. We've got a 60 amp for our 24 volt distribution. We have 150 amps for our solar charge controller and we have 300 amps for our inverter. All those go on the positive lines in the electric shipper. All right, we're all fused up and we are ready to test this out. So let's go grab the family and see if it all works. We're here, the gang's all here. Let's flip some switches. Let's do it. <laughs> you go ahead. All right. <laughs> Okay, all because of. Oh! Wow. Wow. I wasn't expecting that. I didn't realize you left those on. Powered by the sun! <laughs> Alright, Sam just switched the batteries on. We instantly have a bunch of 12 volt lights on. Why does that feel so crazy? Because it's amazing. It's amazing. Thanks. Lithium battery bank. Lights. Sam just hit the breaker for the solar panels. Now the solar panels are sending a charge to our charge controller. Let's see if there's any lights on it. We got lights on it. Next thing up is to turn on the inverter, which I believe is that. What is this? Oh. What is this? <laughs> and now we've got a main breaker. But it's not attached. I don't think we have AC power, guys. <laughs> That's odd. I just moved the main breaker from the first slot to the second slot. I don't know, just a hunch. Let's see if it works. Overload. Overload. The first power that I turned on overloaded the whole thing. So we're gonna just work our way across and see what happens. So I got that one on. That one. That one. That one. That one. All right, mini switch is turned on. It's one of those last two. All right, so we have AC power. We may have one circuit that's not happy. Maybe it's like a switch that I wired wrong or something. Guys, would you look at that? The bus is off grid. This is definitely one of the most exciting moments in a build. So happy to be here. Oh, we got the Roku TV on. Look at that. 
So everything you saw me install, to the best of my abilities, I have linked below. These are affiliate links. If you buy anything from them, you will be paying me a commission, which helps support this channel, and I really appreciate it. I wanna give a huge shout out to Lion Energy Lithium Batteries. They've been a great supporter of our channel, and they are giving you an exclusive discount to their products in the links below, or at tinyurl.com slash lion dash gilligan. You will get these batteries at the best price, as well as every other product on their website. Schoolbustinyhouse.com is our website if you want some more advice about building your schoolie. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.